Welcome to the Pisces New Moon reading today. I'm Cassisbel. This is BB, and I got three cards for us today. We've got the Hermit card, the Orange card, Creativity and Vitality, and the Moth card. And so first, Pisces. We're deep deeply, deeply immersed in the Pisces energy with, I believe, Sun, um, Venus, and Moon, obviously, and just Piscean energy. And so when I think of Pisces, I really think about water as a molecule, like the way that water exists in us, in the air, in every living thing, in everything that creates this earth water is all around us it is a necessary part of our physical existence on this planet and it is what connects us and it's what ties us to stories and realities and understandings and it is like tied to the subconscious realm because the moon affects the tides and affects the waters inside of us so there's all of these things that tie together the waters and that's what Pisces gives me the energy of understanding that we are a consciousness a being a spirit that exists outside of the physical realm and we all exist in a soup together and so Pisces can sometimes lean towards like escapism because it is an ability to exist in the spiritual realm and that's why the Virgo polarity helps bring it down into the physical realm. And so when we can marry those two things together, but now that we're so steeped in all of this Piscean energy, it can be a time to really pay attention to, are we staying grounded in our body? Are we paying attention to our routine? How are we honoring our spiritual self and what that self needs? and our physical self and what that self needs so that we can be the healthiest version of ourself and to understand this deeply subconscious time of the new moon the dark moon so we're in the darkness we're understanding the unknown or at least allowing ourselves to be okay with the unknown the piscean energy wants us to really be okay with letting go of the necessity to control everything but also not forsaking ourselves in the process so the i'm gonna start with the hermit card um major arcana so it's more this big picture part of the story and i i personally feel a lot of pull a lot of times to push myself to do, 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 be trying to figure out my life, whatever that looks like in the world as it is today, when in reality, it's not even that time yet. We're still, again, heavily steeped in this Pisces stuff. So it's not, it's not that Aries push to like, go, 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 or uh, begin the spring or what have you, you know, it's the, the Piscean energy in the, in the hermit card is like understand that you have the draw in you you have the essence the vibration the whatever you want to call it the the magical stuff inside of you and you have an opportunity right now to really center in yourself to really get in your shell protect your energy and also you have this light on your back and so usually this card is like depicted as somebody in a cloak with their with their light and they're walking in the darkness and when you think of hermit you just think oh that person's alone or that entity is alone and hermit alludes to just being off on your own and never interacting but that's not necessarily what this means like with this light like this lantern on the back of the tortoise it's an understanding that you're gathering energy you're gathering knowledge you're gathering wisdom in whatever way shape or form that you're doing it by really getting in touch with yourself really understanding what it is that you need to feel safe 
and to flourish and to discover what you're passionate about or what you want to be investing your energy into and in doing that it makes you a beacon it literally makes you the light that draws people to you or draws situations to you or draws whatever it is that you're calling and basically we're always calling stuff it's just a lot of time we're doing it unconsciously and we're not calling in exactly what we want because ultimately in this society it's so much easier to understand what we don't want so now is the time to go inside to allow yourself the rest to allow yourself the grace of whatever is going to come right now and whatever you're going to do to process through it because it's rough it's rough times and is it going to get any easier but we still have opportunities to functionally set our boundaries protect ourselves and decide what it is that we would like just dare dare to imagine what it is that you want or if you can't figure out what you want take the time to say okay what do i not want what's the opposite of that how can i invest more time into what it is that i want and divest more time into what i don't want and putting energy into spinning out on what i don't want cultivate your energy of protection and understand that the more that you get into a space where you're doing what you want the more people are going to come to you situations are going to come to you some situations are going to come to you and tax your energy and take your energy from you and it's up to you to stay centered in yourself so that you can understand what you will stand for what you won't stand for what feels good what doesn't feel good you're always going to have to be checking in with your heart to figure out how do you want to be maneuvering through the situation because the only person that can keep yourself safe is you you keep yourself safe you and your spirits so cultivating those relationships is really important the orange card straight straight sacral chakra card and so that is the sexual organs this the base of your spine that is this point of your body where you are creating your energy creating the energy that you utilize to create new life or also same creating the energy to do anything to get up out of bed to go to work to create art to do anything that you do this is what drives you is this area and when I immediately pulled this if you don't feel like you are tapped into your creative energy or how to utilize your energy in the best way for yourself right now Try to think about what healing needs to be done in this area. What healing needs to be done in how you utilize your energy or what do you need to get into a creative space and to get into a vitality space where you can feel your energy flowing. Chances are you've had it happen before in your life. You've had a time when you were creative, when you were feeling in the flow of things, you were feeling vital energy moving through you. If you're not in that position right now, Take some time to think about that, to meditate on that, to go inside of yourself, protect yourself and think about like, what was I doing when I was feeling vital? And if you are feeling vital, then ride that wave. If you're feeling the energy flow through, you're feeling the creativity right now, blessings to you. I don't feel it, but I'm working on it. And I understand that this is the lesson that needs to be had right now is that if I am not feeling my vital creative energy flowing through me, then it is my job to sit and figure out what is the blockage in me? What is stopping me? What is it that my body needs or my emotions need or my spirits need in order to get that energy out of me? Because I've been there before. I know how it feels and it feels great. And I want us all to feel great. And so how can we do that? It's really checking in with ourselves and protecting ourselves so that we can figure out how do we get back there. And then there's this card, the moth card. And you know, it's this beautiful Luna moth and it's going towards the bright light. And we understand that the moth is a very vulnerable creature, but it is 
it is a creature of faith and intuition it's a creature that moves in the night in the time of the subconscious in the in the time where humans it's scary for us because we don't know how to maneuver through the darkness our eyes don't see so well in there the moth is always going towards the fire or the light or the moon what have you and it's always moving towards that faith base like even in the face of death it's still going to go towards that flame and that's signaling to us right now that like for our spirit energy to really tap in it is a necessity for us to follow our intuition to be guided and being allowed to move through the unknown without fear without judgment of what could happen or when things do happen how do we how do we take care of ourselves in that moment and how do we trust that we're going in the right direction and even death can't stop us because our energy will continue on so this also moths um, emit pheromones and that's how they draw in their mates and I think symbolically speaking we emit our vibrations of what it is that we want based on what we're feeling and what we're thinking about so what we're feeling about and what we're thinking about is drawing more into us and again our culture is so hard pressed for us to constantly acknowledge how terrible everything is and how horrible life is and as we get really stuck in those patterns it gets harder and harder to really figure out what it is that you want where your heart's at what it is that your body needs because we're too spun out on how horrible everything is and i mean like honestly that's valid but if we want to really connect with our intuition and we want to really connect with our faith, something that's going to lead us out of the necessity of being disempowered by a bunch of rich assholes who have all but said that they want us just dead, we can lead ourselves out of that. We do have power. We can be empowered beings and we can follow our intuition to our healing, even if that healing requires some pain, requires some deaths, some rebirths. It is worth that work because we're not just freeing ourselves, we're freeing, we're freeing generations, generations in the future and generations in the past. And as painful as this work might be, or as scary as the work might be, we can cultivate faith and a way that we can cultivate faith is by protecting our energy by understanding that we have a confidence that is worthy uh, and we deserve to exist and by cultivating our creative energy by cultivating our vitality and what drives us and what makes us excited to be alive we've been there before if we're not there right now how do we get there if we are there right now ride the wave and love it and be okay with whatever happens tomorrow because today can be beautiful tomorrow can be beautiful and it can be crazy and it can be all over the place and chaotic and we're still going to be riding the wave and we're still going to be listening to spirit we're still going to be listening to our bodies and our hearts so allow yourself to tap in and allow yourself to protect yourself while we go through these shifts and i'm excited for airy season but for now, it's Pisces. So relax, sleep, rest, take care of yourself, pay attention to your emotions, and I will see you next time.